ready to make a difference in the lives of fathers and their families? The Show Up Dad podcast empowers the next generation of dads to lead with confidence and love. Your support and our amazing partners help us to create lasting impact. Consider donating 50, 100, or 250 to provide a dad with essential resources. And speaking of incredible partners, let us introduce you to Tallman Equipment. Since 1952, Tallman Equipment has been standing taller than the rest of competition in lineman tools. They provide top quality equipment and solutions for linemen, ensuring safety and efficiency on the job. If you're in need of reliable and durable tools, look no further than Tallman Equipment. Also, don't forget to check out our online shop at theshowupshop.myshopify.com for high quality products that support our cause. From t-shirts and hoodies, stickers, and even children's clothes, we have something for everyone. Not only will we be showing your support for our cause, but you'll also be getting a high quality product that you'll love. To learn more about what we do, visit theshowupdadfoundation.org. You can also find Lyman tools at tallmanequipment.com. Thank you for your generosity, and let's empower dads and build stronger families. Welcome to a special episode of the Show Up Dad podcast. Today, we have a remarkable guest joining us, Brandon Rivera. Brandon is a devoted husband and father to four children. He's an advocate for active fatherhood and a wealth advisor at Unity Wealth Partners. Throughout this episode, Brandon will share his personal experiences and insights on building strong relationships with his children, fostering their growth, and finding a work-life balance. Get ready to be inspired and motivated by Brandon's incredible journey as we dive into this special episode of the Show Up Dad podcast. Welcome to our show, brother. Hey, thank you for having me. I really appreciate you having me. Yeah, absolutely, man. I I just, uh, I thank you for your support, man. It's pretty awesome to see someone as busy as you and all the different endeavors in your life to be able to, to support us and our cause and what we're doing and truly believing that, you know, they say, um, you know, put your money where your mouth is and you definitely have done that dude. And, you know, from our organization to you, we, we, we thank you brother. We truly do. No, thank you for uh, continuing to provide the resources and actionable tools to, to the dads who really need to have the voice that maybe they're not able to actually physically be next to someone, but it's almost as as though your uh, your mission uh, has a lot more work to be to be completed. But uh, we're fortunate to have the different speakers and resources to offer. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you, brother, for sure. But um, I just want to kind of open up, Brandon, with you telling us a little bit about your own personal journey as a father and how it shaped your views on active fatherhood, if you don't mind, brother. Yeah, definitely. Um, Well, it hasn't been easy, to say the least. But then again, uh, I guess I have flashbacks to when I had my upbringing. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, as a father, it's, uh, it's a blessing but I'm pretty sure like like have many fathers or dads have said before that there's no there's no uh, manual to see, hey, you know what, this is a checklist to do this, that, and the other. Um, but uh, just circling back, um, so our oldest, she's mm-hmm. fourteen. Um, and I just I just really thankful for my wife because she's been a real true support when it comes to uh, uh, you know, always reminding me to, to be there not only for the kids, but to also just be there in terms of uh, um, like a hundred percent of the time to be present. Yeah. Um, and so, like I said, as a father, our oldest is 14. The youngest is seven. So two boys, two girls. Uh, but they've really kind of given me the perspective of being able to take a pause every now and again and really, really uh, enjoy being there for their gymnastics practice or music lessons. Um, and so being a father, but then also like you were mentioning right now in combination with the different business endeavors, um, I really began to appreciate the uh, the fact that we need to delegate to elevate mm-hmm. to a certain extent. Uh, and so I'm, I'm fortunate to... Uh, to to have other like-minded people surround us um, in the faith 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 journey, but then also here uh, when it comes to uh, 
you know, just being able to take a couple of days off every now and again to, to spend road trips with our families. Um, and that's really what's actually connected us in the last couple of years is, is actually taking trips mm -hmm. because before that it just used to be, uh, you know, work, 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 work. And there's really never used to be any travel or even spending more time with family, but, uh, I'm just excited for the show up, show up dad foundation, um, and your show just because, um, you know, I think I had mentioned when we first met that you had one guest in particular, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, and he was talking about the legacy letter. And, you know, when I was just hearing that episode, it was, uh, something struck my heart in terms of being committed to your organization. Um, and it's almost, uh, you know, there's the sense of harmony now that I guess not only that, but clarity. Yeah. And so your, your talking points and sharing your vision has really opened up my mindset, my heart. And in fact, I think what's really equally important and probably not the most a priority is, is uh, being connected from a faith level. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where I'm actually taking a pause when it comes to, well, not taking a pause, taking the start um, to be more involved in faith-based uh, initiatives. No, that's good. That's good. I'm, I'm glad we're able to uh, just, you know, influence you in that positive direction, brother. I mean, that means a lot to us when we hear, you know, people say that, hey, man, you've really changed us. Your organization has really helped us out. And, and that's a big plus, you know, because... What we do, we really, <laughs> we we do it for the people, obviously, right? But when you're hearing positive feedback like that, even negative feedback, it means you're doing something right, you know? So thank you for that. Exactly. But the, there's something that you said, Brandon, that really caught my attention. It said, delegate to elevate. Now, I look at that in another way, right? It's called discipleship training, right? So when you're delegating to elevate, that's a mark of a good leader. You know that you can't do everything yourself. So when you're able to train the people that are under you to do your job, instead of looking at it as like, yeah, hey, man, these people might take my job, right? In this very closed off mindset type of thing, you know what I mean? It actually frees you up because now you can go on these trips. You can trust that your constituents are going to handle stuff because you trained them correctly. And that's what we're called to do, even as fathers or leaders in industries, right? We're called to make leaders. And I think that's powerful that you're doing that. You know what I mean? And you're absolutely reaping the fu the fruit of that. You know what I'm saying? So no, that's awesome. You. And actually that, that took a certain level of, uh, of, I guess, realistically, giving up control, right? Mm. Uh, just because there's, uh, you know, there's a certain level of skepticism when you know, and you know this because you're in the trade, mm -hmm. but, you know, in your side of the trade might be safety and our side of the profession is precision, mm -hmm. accuracy, accountability. Um, and so it was extremely difficult. And this it probably took me, geez, I've been in the, in the profession for about 20 years, but it took me all, but maybe five years ago to actually draw my own line in the sand to, to tell myself, Hey, you know what, if you want to help others and many, many other people, and I think you said something really important, you know, I have to work alongside other advisors it's not going to just be me in terms of the team. It's going to take a group of like-minded, very experienced and proven people. And not just in a profession, but just, you know, just uh, when we have communication uh, with other people just on a day-to-day -day basis, um, it's just more of a, you know, we're, I've had an appreciation to start listening Mm. Um, and, and really your show and just in general, um, now I kind of, I'm delegating. So that way I could actually start empowering other people, but actually be a voice of, of action. Mm. And so I think 
even like in our space, when it comes to wealth management, um, you know, there's a lot of theory that kind of gets spoken of, but if only if it was, if it was as easy to put something or into action or to implement it, um, uh, people would move a lot further. And so that's where I, I'm on a mission to really start using um, mutual platforms, you mm -hmm. know, like you know, you have an an objective and a mission to to help those fathers, help those fathers become better dads. And it's just a catalyst. It's just a connecting point to start reaching other people. Mm, mm, no, I like that. I like that. You know, definitely one of the biggest uh, tools we can utilize is being able to make connections, right? And I think that's cool that you're looking out for people that are like-minded and are making connections to them. And, you know, it's all networking, bro. That's all everything is, is complete networking, you know? So that's cool. I really, yeah, so similar, awesome. so similar to, uh, so we have a Southern California presence. Well, yeah. it's mo mostly regional. So you have uh, like our presence is here. It's California, Arizona, Nevada, Utah, Texas, mm -hmm. and Colorado. Um, but by us being able to delegate, it's been able to actually prove itself when it comes to reaching on a national level. Mm -hmm. And so what I really envision is to have a platform where it's, of course, it's going to take more than us to mm -hmm. be able to, to have a serious movement, but I'm really, I'm really invested in, in the, uh, the upbringing or the transition from other advisors to really be in alignment with with uh faith family and profession mm -hmm. um you know one of one of the the good organizations that has really been a, a light when it comes to this journey is uh is uh it's called kingdom advisors and so you know initially it wasn't really uh like vocal when it came mm -hmm. to the organization but these are faith driven advisors. Um, and the organization was started by Ron blue. Um, and just, it's just really amazing to see that I always tell clients and I always tell other advisors that there are not enough of us to be able to effectively transform people's lives and really help them grow. Mm -hmm. Um, when it comes to faith, family and, and their trade or the profession. And so um, it's just going to be a really, really remarkable future. No, I could definitely see that um, we're raising men, you know what I mean? Literally, you know, we're, we're helping men be able to make better decisions for the direction of their family, you know, and uh, that's really powerful. It really is, man. Think of the impact you got. It, it this is going to bring. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And speaking about raising men, it's uh, <laughs> it was one of those things. Uh, you know, your organization, just in general, mm -hmm. uh, is a real. You know, we're in a in a point in our society where, you know, instead of just kind of being more of a passive kind of participant to society, mm -hmm. um and I think you had mentioned it in one of your previous shows, you know, we need to really, really put our voice where, where change is going to take place, you mm -hmm. know, whether it be our, our local community or whether it be at our state level. Um, and so it's almost interesting, but it hasn't really come into a realization until I had to really take perspective when, you know, my parents are getting older, for example, mm -hmm. and then we have younger kids. Um, and so before I always used to say, oh, you know, we're the next generation. We're that, what, you know, now I can no longer say we're the next generation because we are the generation to, to actually start, like you said, discipling mm -hmm. the next generation. So, you know, there's really, there was really no, uh, playbook or any type of outline that says, okay, well, at one point do you transition from, from uh, telling yourself that you're going to be the next generation into actually realizing 
you're like, okay, well, wait, like we we're here now. So we have to start, start making some changes. Hmm. Yeah. That's it. I never thought of it that way. That's actually pretty, pretty awesome. You know what I mean? Cause yeah, we, the next generation is coming up, you know what I mean? It's, I don't know. It, 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 that's a crazy perspective, you know, for sure. It really didn't hit until our daughter entered her freshman year in high school, uh-huh. which is this year. And so I was like, well, wait a minute. Um, that's, that's pretty, that was pretty fast in terms of, mm-hmm. of, uh, of an event. Oh yeah, for sure, man. I was looking at baby pictures yesterday with my wife. My daughter's graduating this year. Wow. You know, and we're looking at her pictures and she's running around and her little princess tutu carrying a, a, a baby chickie in one hand. Cause we used to have a farm. Mm-hmm. Baby chicky underneath one arm and her BB gun in the other with pink cowboy boots on. You know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> holy smokes, where does the time go? Yep. You know? Now sure. we're going to see if our training of her actually is good. You know what I mean? Because she's going to be a, a, a young woman out in the world here soon. You know what I mean? So this is where everything occurs. Uh, accumulates right all the training all the discipleship that we've done with her and you know everything we've we've done to raise her to the best of our ability pretty much what we owe her okay Mm -hmm. because we owe our children that we Mm -hmm. owe them a debt you know and uh we're gonna see we're gonna see if if we did a good job or not you know what i mean and you know the fruit will be there so well i think uh well i don't think i know as long as the circle of influence mm-hmm. um, is solid and has kind of mutual expectations of setting standards, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I don't, there's no doubt that that she'll go a long ways in her endeavor. Mm-hmm. No, which, I, I don't, which, I don't. which high school graduation, it's uh, what are we like almost mid year? It seems mm-hmm. so. So, um, exciting exciting times for you to actually see what you're saying right now is to see <laughs> to see yeah. uh, to see the the uh the uh conversations or the, the different moments in in conversation um you know really really helping her out when it comes to decision making absolutely uh, you know it's exciting you know i tell my wife cuz my wife kind of worries and I'm like look you know we don't need, we don't just preach it to her. We're living it. I was like, we're not perfect by any means. Mm-hmm. I was like, but she sees us living it, you know, whether we're arguing or whatever, she sees us being able to talk to each other and communicate effectively. And she sees us living it with us, not drinking or doing drugs or anything like that, you know? So, I think we'll be all right. I, I really do. I, I believe, you know, and if she, you know, she's a young adult and if she makes decisions that are bad, then so be it. She'll learn from them and make the correction needed. And as long as she knows that we're always going to be there for her and give her advice, what we think, you know, and, and be able to advise her. I think she's going to, she's going to be, she's going to be doing good. You know what I mean? She has a pretty good head on her shoulder. So I'm, I'm thankful for that for sure. And your youngest, your youngest is, uh, <laughs> he's going to be nine this week. So he's, uh, he's all excited. He's still into the whole Hulk and gorilla stage, you know? And, oh, there you go. Uh, yeah. He's funny, man. Kemper. He, uh, he's into this new thing where he loves aviator glasses uh-huh. and yeah, he's like super into style and lifting weights and stuff like that. So he weighs, he wears these aviator glasses and then he wears this little bomber jacket and he's really into this one arm wrestler. Cause I arm wrestle. And, um, there's a guy who's on TikTok, pretty, you know, we call him TikTok famous, but, uh, his name's Etienne and the guy is a phenomenal arm wrestler, strong. He's up and coming and stuff like that, but he wears these cool, uh, sunglasses and they call him the arm wrestler whisper. Right. <laughs> and, uh, he sees that he's just totally into that. And he's just all about it. So it's, it's kind of uh, cool. You know what I mean? Oh my God. It's someone. So our, our, uh, our eight year old reminds me of, cause he likes to wear glasses too, but he, 
he was hooked for for some time on the the movie what is it over the top yes uh, yep, yep. <laughs> he's like, oh man he's like dad put that one movie on again mm-hmm. um dude they, you know, there's dude you know what's funny is that one of my past guests was the guy who trained Sylvester Stallone Wow. And that movie over the top. Yeah. Alan Fisher. He's the guy who trains me. Um, he's a 26 time world champion, him and his wife, Carolyn. They did a podcast with this on marriage, which was, I mean, if you guys get a chance to check it out, um, talks about all the ups and downs um, they had in their marriage and finally come to the realization that some of the hardships that they had to go through and that they're struggling with was actual, um, due to him having Asperger's and they didn't even know about it. That's when Asperger's um, was fairly new. Mm -hmm. It's a form of autism. And um, he acted a certain way that came off as what she says, you know, like an asshole, like straight up. She, he didn't like the family or anything. It wasn't that at all. I mean, this guy, if you ever meet Alan, he's got the biggest heart. I mean, this guy is just amazing. He could tear your arm off because he's so strong. But he's such a gentle spirit, dude. Super intense, though. Like, he is super intense and super focused. Um, But, man, he just has a big heart. And I could see where that would come off without knowing, right, mm-hmm. that he was really upset at the family and stuff like that. And it took her having to go on this crazy journey to figure out, man, my husband has Asperger's. And that's the reason why he acts the way he does and we need to get him the appropriate help, you know? So it's pretty mm-hmm. interesting. It was a, it was a really cool podcast, you know, I'm going to have to tune into that one because, uh, it's like how you're describing it. It almost, it, it emphasizes the importance of communication, mm-hmm. um, with, with who, whomever we come in communication or contact with to communicate, um, you know, whether you like someone or don't like someone, but, having the ability to, you know, to have the patience to hear someone and their insights, whether it be right or wrong, and actually, you know, maybe, you know, mutually guiding when it comes Mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, helping whoever we're we're talking with to maybe find their way to, to see the better light. Yeah, for sure. No, I like that you put communication because isn't that like one of the number one things that we can control, right? If you think about it, I mean, how we listen, if we're listening to respond or listening to understand, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, man, some of the, the biggest arguments I've seen with married couples is the lack of communication or not even being able to communicate correctly, you know? No, I agree. In fact, uh, I really have to remind myself because and my wife tells me this. She's like, you know what? You know, sometimes I hear you have conversations with clients and it almost seems as though you're, the conversations are really, really on point. You know, you're, you know, you're giving them insights, you're giving them direction, you know, but, and so it really took a certain level of acceptance to really talk to myself and say, Hey, you know what? That's so, that's so true. Like it's, it shouldn't have to come down to, uh, and I guess, you know, being in the career, which is, which has really been my only career and profession for like over 20 years, mm-hmm. you know, my whole life, it was always, even with my parents and their wealth management practice, it's always been around, around business, business, business conversation, you know, but now I have more sense of appreciation to actually transform conversations. And I think one of the, one of the top topics that we really like to focus on here is, is generational planning. Mm -hmm. Generational planning doesn't really consist of just assets. Generational planning can consist of exactly the mission that you're on when it comes to connecting family or non-family in this whole world that we live in. Um, and so it's just really, uh, you know, it took a lot of, I guess it took a lot to overcome the pride 
of actually saying, hey, you know what? You're right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah. sometimes we don't want to be wrong, but mm -hmm. for the for the betterment of of actually making progress, you know, we need to we need to kind of checks and balance and you know every once in a while you know have a tune-up and so mm -hmm. uh you know it's it's a process uh but i think like someone once said before you know uh, progress over perfection because what is the definition of perfection so uh you know it's uh it's it is step by step realization to really appreciate each and every single day mm. Mm. Could have said it better myself, man. I think it's funny though that you said about um our wives, right? And man, it, it's so true, man, because they help us see our weaknesses, even though we don't want to hear it. That's their job. They're like a mirror, you know. They show us our shortcomings, you know, not in a derogatory way or anything like that. But um prime example was my wife. You know, she showed me where I can listen to people all day long, right? And when it comes to listening to her to get her order correct for Starbucks or whatever, right? I'd get it completely wrong. And she's like, I just heard you get an order for your friend and you carried it out perfectly. But when it came to me, why can't you do that for me? And what I was really communicating to her in that moment is that you don't matter as much as them. Or that's that's not what I was, my intent was, but that's where my actions are showing her, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, her pointing that out to me really got me to start thinking and be like, man, I am failing in this area. She should be my number one priority over everything, over my children and everything. My wife should be, you know, only second to God. That's it, you know, and... um I have to make some some changes, you know, but it took her telling me this, right? And I could see back in my younger years that she would have told me that um, before I had all this growth and everything, I could have seen myself getting offended to that and completely shutting her down, but, mm -hmm. you know, but through growth, through progress, like you're talking about, I'm able to receive what she's telling me, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think it comes down to... Uh... And anywhere in life, and there's a there's a book I don't recall uh -huh. the author, but it's called Growth Mindset. Uh -huh. um, and that was introduced to me by a colleague. I want to say maybe about six or seven years ago. Uh huh. Um, and so growth mindset, and I think they were even sharing this with uh, with our kids a couple years ago. But you know, it comes down to the learning mindset, mm -hmm. meaning. You know, we were, even though we probably don't have the ability to know everything, but mm -hmm. if we could connect ourselves to other people who have the growth mindset, who really want to be the voice of reason. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, it's just uh, the communication aspect. And that's why I'm tuning in, you know, to your other episodes because that's what we really, what I personally really need is like the real talk yeah, and the real, the real context or the real practicable, practical suggestions mm -hmm. to, to make positive change. Now, I like that you said that I had a guest yesterday, him and his wife came on for our Lyman Chronicles episode and uh, we just aired it. Um, we love their family. They're, they're amazing people. Um, Brian was telling me, he's like, man, he's like, why do you want us? You know, and <laughs> we explained to him. He's like, oh, dude, we're like, he's like, I've seen some of the guests you've had on there. You got some high caliber guests, Dave. He's like, your your podcast is super successful. Everybody I talk to knows about it. He's like, dude, why do you want us? And I was like, man, because you're what people want to hear. Your voice. Mm -hmm. You know, your mess sometimes is your message. And you're able to get on there and and paint a different picture for people who are struggling and to bring hope. Cause this is what this podcast is about. Brandon is bringing hope when you have people like that, who are humble and, you know, are going through life, real life, you know, that that's going to bring hope to people that are in the same area. You know, I agree. 
you had talked a little bit about uh, building strong relationships and stuff like that earlier. Um, what are some practical ways that fathers can actively engage with their children to build those strong relationships? What do you do, Brandon? You know what? Uh, a lot of people don't know, but at one point in time, you know, I was a drummer in middle school, mm -hmm. high school, a little bit after high school. And so the reason why I share that is, what I've been really trying to focus on is bringing out the best in our kids. Mm. And so, you know, when it comes to the oldest, our oldest daughter, uh, you know, she likes art. And yeah. so my wife is really a supporter when it comes to, you know, uh, spending time with her when it comes to, you know, uh, putting together different art forms and different types of creative creative, uh, content. And then back to the whole music concept is with our two boys, I've been really, really focused on, you know, if they have practice on Thursdays, mm -hmm. I really want to, I really want to attend their practice on Thursdays, Thursday afternoons. And then our, our daughter, the youngest one, you know, she does gymnastics Tuesdays, Thursdays. Uh, my goal is to be able to be there because she hasn't started her competitions yet, but mm -hmm. to really be there for those competitions. And so uh, everything in between, um, one of the ways that I've been really, really able to connect with the kids is through, uh, through traveling. Mm. And so, you know, we take road trips or we go to Southern Utah um, to see family and, um, and I would actually really thank those in the trade who, who've actually really showed me that, you know, go out and enjoy the outdoors, go out. And so, uh, you know, it's been a real eye opener maybe the last few years mm -hmm. only because, you know, I, I never really planned any vacations or I never planned any getaways or, um, but even down to the more simple area, more simpler kind of connection, which is like, you know, we, we go to the park, something as simple as this going to the park and, you know, throwing the football. Yeah. And so ways of connecting with our kids, it's, uh, it's, it's mostly focused nowadays on being present mm -hmm. and, and, um, you know, you have to always watch myself to not get distracted by the cell phone. You know, mm -hmm. if I'm there and then, you know, I, I need to be there present. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but yeah, it's been a, it's been an interesting journey. Mm -hmm. uh, just because the last, uh, I keep saying the last few years, but the last few years has seemed like a lifetime. Yeah. Um, but, you know, being able to, to see, the progress in our kids. And I think you had mentioned it before, but you know, a lot of times our kids are almost like a mirror image to a certain extent mm -hmm. of who we are as dads. And so, um, you know, if they catch on things like a magnet, then I, I want to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm actually resonating something that's positive. Yeah, for sure. We definitely want to be someone they want to emulate, right? In a positive way. Um, I like what I wanted to ask you is what have you seen? Like now that you're making those connections, right? And you're 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 being intentional about it, right? Because it takes intention to to spend time with each and every kid to figure out their likes and dislikes. That's an intentional dad. Have you seen a difference? and their character or the way they act now that you're more present with them? I would say yes. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, you know, cause I used to, do, I used to do a lot of travel before mm -hmm. and I have to be cautious of, of planning trips in the future. And so, you know, once I started realizing that, you know, I don't need to be at this meeting. I don't, I don't need to be at that meeting. And that goes back to the conversation that we had a few minutes ago when it comes to delegating, mm -hmm. um, you know, instead of me attending 
let's say a voluntary meeting. Well, you know, before I would just be like, Oh yeah, I know. Sign me up, sign me up. Mm -hmm. Now I'm very selective when it comes to time. And that's something that I advocate, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it be in the office uh, or out of the office, uh, we need to be very selective. You know, time is finite. Yeah. And so if we're going to be, and you mentioned this, something really important before is, you know, if you're going to be working on something, you know, you're, you're there. If you're yeah. going to be at home, then you're going to be at home. And I think that's something that you had shared with me in our first conversation that, that has still stuck in my mind. Uh, but to be, and, you know, kind of goes back to what we spoke about is there's not a sense of balance, yeah. but it's more of a sense of harmony, meaning, yes, you know, the, the song is going to be loud in one, one part of the song and it's going to be low in another part of the song. And you have this, these different instruments that are just kind of going with the harmony and going throughout the track. Um, and so it's, uh, it's just really important to, to be selective for the betterment of, of our kids. Because another thing too, I always have to remind myself is, uh, you know, our kids are going to grow up fast. Yeah. And you know, the, the last thing that we would want towards the future is like a certain level of regret. And so if we could actually make some selective choices, you know, down the line, we're going to have more, uh, we're going to be more effective. No, for sure. Definitely. We'll, we'll, I mean, that's, that's a true leader right there. You know, um, we are going to be more effective. You're absolutely right. I think it's cool though, that, um, like I said before, you're, you're just being super intentional about it. You know, that, that takes discipline. Hey, you know, man, every, it takes practice. <laughs> yeah, it does, brother. Because I mean, the last thing you want to do after a long day is come home and, you know, just be bombarded by your wife, by your children. Right. But mm -hmm. it takes discipline. One of the things that was taught to me before I'd get home and I enjoyed longer drives, right? Because I could unwind during that time, whether it's listening through to a podcast or listening to some worship music or just even turning off the radio and being alone with my own thoughts, dude, and going over how the day went and stuff like that. Right. And just being able to just really unwind before I stepped into that door. Cause I knew the moment I went into that door, guess what? I took off that hat that I was wearing and I needed to be present for my family. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, that, that takes discipline. It really does, dude, because it's so easy to just come home and crack open a beer, mm -hmm. you know, and just uh, throw your feet up, watch the game or whatever, whatever it is you may be doing, you know. Um, it's easy to do that, right? But it takes that discipline to be like, you know what, I'm going to deny myself and I'm going to give my children, my family what is owed to them, you know. I owe them to be present in their lives. You know, I can't be there all the time, but when I am there, I owe them that, mm -hmm. you know. So that's, that's really cool, man, that you're, you're narrowing that down and you're implementing that brother. I'm really and the, proud the, of that. The next step of, uh, of us improving is actually the art of, of, uh, showing attention or spending time with, with, with our children in different ways. Mm. So that's, uh, I've been, you know, talk about listening or kind of, you know, knowing how to really communicate with their kids. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that's when I really, you really know how to speak to one, you know, of course, you know, we connect with them equal, yeah. equally. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it's that art between, hey, you know what, I want to spend time with two of the kids. Um, you know, like I we have four kids. And so, Sometimes, uh, having the, you know, the bonding one on, you know, between the boys with the boys and then we take the girls. And so that's, it's, uh, it's a real art and I don't, maybe that's the wrong word to use, but, uh, you know, it, it really comes down to 
to uh, connecting individually because mm-hmm. you know it's it's a challenge when it yeah. comes to and you know this as well as I do. So like, oh yeah, <laughs> you know because each kid has their different in- individuality, right? What mm-hmm. works for one kid isn't going to work for the the other kid, you know. Um, and it's being that intentional, like we go back to all the time, is being able to read that in our children, right? Mm-hmm. And the only way you're going to be able to read that is if you're spending time with them because time is influence. So when we're able to do that, you can see that, hey, my daughter likes this or this, you know, will work for her. Isn't going to work for my son. My son's very inquisitive. He he likes uh, uh, answers. He, he likes uh, doing research and stuff like that, you know, and that's what gets him going. And then I have my baby who is into just working out. He loves anything tough, strong. Conan the Barbarian, whatever it may be, that's that's his thing. You know what I'm saying? So he's, it takes he's preparing for the uh, the arm wrestling championship, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's it's something that is in them, right? Mm-hmm. They came up with their own personalities, and you know, God gave them each their own personalities, right? And mm-hmm. it's up to us to be able to see them, to understand their strengths, their weaknesses. And try to help them develop in that area, you know? I agree. How do you prioritize your self-care, brother? Uh, being that you're busy, you know, how do you ensure that you have enough mental and emotional energy to invest in your family, especially with all the stuff you take on, bro? Rise early. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I always used to, you know, self-care, you know, before – you know, for the for the longest time when I was younger and kind of, I was always into going to the gym. Mm-hmm. It was just, it was a discipline aspect. And then, it's funny that we're talking about this, but you know, once we had our once we started having our kids, uh, you know, time starts to get compressed. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when everything said and done, I had to actually go back and almost set the reminder of, Hey, you know what? The day needs to start early. And so, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the average wake up calls, you know, 4 45 AM. So self-care, I'm not totally into, uh, even though you're kind of inspiring me now when it comes to the whole, uh, the, the weights and stuff like that. But, uh, now when I rise early, it's, uh, you know, that's actually when I hear your, your, when I listen to your episodes is, uh, you know, at the gym early, early, get back home, take the kids to school and then hit the road to the office. Um, but then I think self-care, you know, aside from the physicality of, of taking care of the physical health, um, it's really, it's really more of connecting with the growth mindset types of ind- individuals, um, mm-hmm. whether it be, uh, you know, at the faith level, the professional level. Um, and so I just really think, uh, you know, the self-care aspect, um, I guess before I was having, I wouldn't eat until maybe like 3 PM. And so the wow. only reason I, the only reason I bring that up is, uh, it's an important reminder to, uh, that we need to take care of our well being mm-hmm. in order for us to be there um for not this family but the people that are surrounding surrounding us. Yeah, for sure. You definitely don't know whenever you're gonna run into a situation and you want to be prepared. Um I like what uh DJ Shipley said. It's a guy I follow. He's a he's a, a frog man, really awesome dude. And his dad's real famous. Um, he's a legacy. So his dad was a frogman in Vietnam and DJ Shipley is one of the guys that was on the Osama bin Laden raid. Right. Anyhow, he goes on to say how he wants to be prepared for any situation, you know, and he's not able to do that if he's constantly drunk or under the influence. Right. Um, what good is he, if he's been drinking all night and then there's a, a young lady who's trapped in her vehicle and her car's on fire or whatever, and he's too inebriated to be able to even rescue her. He's not good to society at all Mm -hmm. or even to your family. Say if your family gets attacked or something like that, you know what I mean? And 
what good are you if you can't even defend them, right? So his deal is always be ready and prepared. And there's a level of uh, physicality that is involved with that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I always think of that uh, as something I've always uh, put into practice, you know, always trying to be physically fit, not for like the t-shirt muscles, like we used to call them or anything like that, but just, <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? Just being able yeah. to, to handle yourself if you need to. Right. And I think that's important. We call that the airplane effect, right? Um, what I mean by that is that when you're in a plane, you know, they go through all the proper steps. They tell you, you know, if this mask comes down, if there's a, a breach in the hull, your oxygen mask comes down. You want to secure that oxygen mask around yourself first before you go to your loved ones. And the reason being is you're not good to them if you're incapacitated. So you have to put in that self-care, right? And that that entails going and seeing the doctor, getting checked, making sure you're healthy, having a, a life policy in place, right? For your legacy and stuff like that, insurances and stuff like that. One of the things that happened with my brother when he passed away is he didn't have that in place because why? He thought he had more time. And that's like a lot of guys. We always think, oh, I'll do that next year or I'll get to that next week, right? The problem is, like you said, time is finite, dude, and it goes so quick, and we might not have another day. So we mm -hmm. need to be prepared, you know? Exactly. Well, you brought up a good topic is, uh, you know, what we do here as a firm is we make sure that all the fundamentals mm -hmm. are put into place. Yeah, um, and not to go into all the, I guess the the language of what fundam the fundamentals are, but you know, like you mentioned, you know, a life insurance. You know, a lot of times there's coverage in place, but the question is, is it an adequate amount? You know, another another area is kind of uh, is the living trust, mm -hmm. something as simple and basic as a living trust. Is there one in place? Uh, and so what we're doing here as a firm is to actually partner with certain firms. You know, there's a, I guess I'll throw out the name. It's like wealth.com. Mm -hmm. So we're actually extending the invitation to create a living trust. And of course, with all the other legal documents in collaboration with, with wealth.com. And, you know, we actually, we're actually really, really focused on those key fundamentals, mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, you brought up the conversation and it's one of those things where, uh, it was almost a reminder when you asked me how, how do I take, you know, the health and the well being, Um, but I didn't bring up the whole like financial aspect of mm -hmm. well being, And that's sometimes I have to remind myself just because I'm, I know, the conversations like the back of my hand that maybe this conversation that we're having can actually extend the opportunity for someone to even maybe do it, do it yourself type of checklist. Yeah. Um, and so it's similar to, to, uh, to exercising or to physical health, you know, you could have the discipline and the accountability to, to have your own uh, exercise regimen. Mm -hmm. Or you could do it yourself. Um, you could, I'm sorry, you could have a physical trainer. Um, just like what we're doing here as a firm is we understand that certain people want to have it a do-it-yourself kind of mm -hmm. checklist. But then at the same time, you know, we kind of have a point of reference if someone needs a second opinion or if someone just needs to delegate those fundamental aspects. And so um, I really think the fact that you brought up the the well-being aspect, because sometimes just because I know in my mind what financial well-being is, um, it's not always true when it comes to to others who I'm actually sharing the message with. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like I said, my brother thought his life insurance covered him. He thought uh, his accidental life and dismemberment, right? It only covered him at work if he got injured uh, at work. Mm -hmm. His accident was away from work. The guy was hunting with his wife in the middle of nowhere, you know, and um, she had to fall back on his 
1K and stuff like that. But man, can you imagine how much better off they would have been if you would have had something in place? Because mm-hmm. no one wants to think they're gonna going to die, right? No one has that premonition that they're going to die. I mm-hmm. mean, this dude was 38 years old. He was about to celebrate his 39th birthday the very next day. Wow. He had just killed a big bull elk, dude. Mm-hmm. And- you know, left two two little girls. You know, um, I guess uh, the challenge that I could suggest for to one of one of the challenges for today's conversation is, you know, when it comes to life insurance. Mm-hmm. You know, life insurance. There's an assumption that the life insurance life insurance coverage can be like an unlimited amount, mm-hmm. meaning, oh, you know, let's say for example, I could afford a. $15 million policy. There's an assumption that, oh, okay, well, let me go apply for that. What's well, so the challenge that I have is for the dads, let's calculate what your maximum is going to be. And then we could do the reverse engineering to figure out, okay, well, which type of tool do you want to use? Um, you know, let's choose the maximum for the, the most cost effective for the present day situation. Mm-hmm. And then we could, make a determination of which type to get, which, you know, for how long to get. So it's not really, you know, what type of particular solution should I choose today? But it's more of, you know, what is the maximum calculation? How do I do the reverse engineering to get to something that is in alignment with with a budget or what, what's like cash flow? We do a lot of cash flow management here. And so ultimately what ends up happening is a lot of times people they're like, okay, well, it's, it's more cost effective than what I really thought it was. And there's that assurance peace of mind, like you're mentioning right now is something's put in place, whether as opposed to the prolonging of putting something in place. No, I agree. Sometimes it's just done is better than perfect, right? Uh, just mm-hmm. taking that first step, you know what I mean, to actually get something in place. And then with guys like you who are there to help and kind of guide them if they have questions, I mean, that's super important, bro. Because, I mean, this is your livelihood. Like you said, legacy, mm-hmm. right? We can't take any of this shit with us when we go away. No. I've never seen a hearse with a U-Haul trailer. Nope. You know? So what are you going to leave for your children? That's a question. What do you want to leave for your kids if something were to happen in five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years? You know, uh, it's it's all about, um, you know, being, you know, the legacy, you know, legacy is really us living our life today and connection with the people that we connect with. Mm -hmm. But my my mindset really changed with the word legacy is you know how can we have our kids our grandkids continue to not have the financial means to just stop contributing to society as a whole mm-hmm. but what can we actually do to leave a legacy for our kids our grandkids where they could continue the work when we're no longer here. Um, and I think that's an important attribute is, you know, like what we do here too is, uh, is charitable planning mm-hmm. and charitable planning in connection with, uh, generational planning, meaning if there's certain causes or missions or initiatives that we want to see come into fruition, uh, if something happens to us in five years, four years, three years, tomorrow, you know, there's the assurance that we'll actually be able to take care of other people. Um, and that's why I have such uh, an appreciation for the trade is, um, yes, there's organizations um, to help support uh, certain the fallen, but I just, there's not enough support just because there's only there's only a finite amount of resources. There's a Proverbs that I heard, Proverbs 13, 22, and it talks about how a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children, meaning their grandchildren, right? But a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous, right? So going back to what we said earlier, you can't take it with you. You know, 
be a good man, leave that inheritance, you know, mm-hmm. leave that legacy, you know, get your stuff in order, be prepared. Right. I agree. You know, so. And I think uh, in a, in, in conjunction with that proverb is uh, it's almost wise and worthwhile mm-hmm. to factually know that if I'm no longer here, if we're no longer here, then like you said, I can't take it with me. So let me put something together where I know the direction it's going to go towards. Yeah. So it's almost like uh, the show of that foundation is, do you know the direction you're going towards? Um, You know, and if not, we have the tools and the resources to actually start putting, start organizing. Exactly. I think about it too, like even with our spouse, what peace of mind that gives them, right? Because our our spouses want to know the present, past, and future is taken care of, Mm -hmm. you know? And especially like in our industry and the trade that we're in, a lot of the wives stay at home. They're stay-at-home moms, right? They don't have jobs. They're giving up careers, all this stuff to to help us further our career so we can provide a better life for them, right? That's the way it usually works. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, Man, what happens if your husband goes away? What do you have in place? Correct. I mean, that's a, that's a scary thing to think about. What are they going to do if you die? And it may not even be at work, right? It could be on the ride to work or whatever, a car accident, whatever, heart attack, like my brother. One of these fluke things. When it's your time, it's your time, right? But who's going to take care of your family? Correct. Now. And so just to, to provide to provide some light in terms of what steps can be taken. So that's why here here at a firm or just we're making it a point mm-hmm. to improve the dialogue and the conversation between spouses. Um and so even my wife is something that I had mentioned to her is uh for us to be able to put together an initiative to improve communication with the fundamentals between spouses. Is a, is it an easy conversation? No, but mm-hmm. it's really, it's one that should be more positive and empowering to just have the peace of mind mm-hmm. to not have arguments over money or arguments over, you know, certain assets, but just to be on the same page for the betterment of everyone in the picture really yeah no, i couldn't agree with you more brother well brandon it's time brother um can i have you give our audience uh your information and how they could reach out to you because i know you have a ton of information for these people you know and i know they're going to be hitting you up because your organization is very very family driven and i highly recommend you so i just want to give this opportunity for you to be able to let them know how they can reach you Yes, definitely. Uh, you could reach us directly by email, contact at unitywealthpartners.com. Uh, here in the office, our direct telephone number is 949-688-0928. Um, so those two means of communication, um, one of our assistants would be able to coordinate and and share what our process is for our onboarding process. Right on, man. Well, once again, thank you, Brandon, for coming on here and just being able to just share your story, uh, have this wonderful conversation with me. And uh, thank you for being a supporter of our foundation, brother. No, thank you. And I look forward to continuing the support. Right on, brother. Well, God bless. We'll be talking to you soon. Thank you.